Happy Mola Monday, Epic 7, and what a crazy Monday it's been so far. First, and to the relief of many, Smilegate has heard our complaints and completely rolled back the ALOTS changes. Like, all of them. Like it never even happened. I'm a little disappointed they removed all of it. They could have just left him with the increased effectiveness and the strip on his S3, but I guess it was just easier to can the whole thing rather than pick and choose. Regardless, Spirit's Breath ALOTS will continue to be an amazing cheese for all kinds of PvE. But the big news everyone is talking about is Elvira. They're not just adjusting her S3 to break the toxicity of Candlestick's interaction, but they're also buffing the heck out of this unit. Coincidentally, the timing of this change is after maintenance, so that's this Thursday. It means her change goes into effect at the same time as the balance patch, effectively making her part of the balance patch. I cover the balance patch, who is getting buffed, who is getting nerfed, and how I think it will impact their kits in the January balance patch tier list video, so maybe check that one out, there'll be a link in the description. Now, before I talk about Elvira, I want to go over something. Now this is not an ad or a sponsorship, but a personal request, so please don't skip past this. It's never been easy for me to ask for help, but in this situation, it's not help for me, but for somebody very dear to me. I don't think there's anyone out there who hasn't had a friend or family member impacted by cancer. And my friend Susan is such a person. I have so many good memories of my time spent with her that I, I could tell stories for hours and barely scratch the surface. Her surgery got the first 75% of the cancer, and the prognosis is good that this next surgery will get the remaining out, but the rounds of surgery and chemo and treatment have forced her to close her practice for the foreseeable future, and as you can imagine, the bills have started to mount. Now, I'm not a person who is comfortable asking for help, but she is a wonderful person with a beautiful soul, a true light in the darkness, so if you can spare anything. There's a link to her GoFundMe in the description of the video. Feel free to share this anywhere and everywhere that you can. Even if you have nothing more to offer than just good thoughts and positive energies, those are welcome too and very appreciated. So thank you for your consideration and hearing me out on this because fuck cancer. Okay, so let's talk about Elvira and what they did to her. Elvira was a hero initially designed to counter enemies who were reliant on fighting spirit. However, an issue arose where when she was used in conjunction with Prophetic Candlestick, it allowed her to sustain her immortality forever. And prolong battles, and I mean really prolong battles. This led to a crappy experience for both Elvira users and their opponents because nobody wants to be in a 30 minute match. To address this issue, Smilegate is adjusting her S3 skill, and that should eliminate this problem, and maintain her as a hero capable of stopping fighting spirit. The first adjustment involves altering her S3, capturing Sacrifice. This alteration will mean she is no longer affected by skill cooldown increases or decreases. So although she cannot reduce the cooldown of her skills outside of her turn, this change will also ensure that nobody can increase the cooldown of her skills. So units like Knockwall, Lua, and the upcoming Judge Kisei, all those who can increase skill cooldowns, she will be immune to that effect. Furthermore, Elvira will now contribute more offensively by having a defense break on her S3 in addition to the heal block. So no more skill cooldown reductions from things like Asaria or Prophetic Candlestick, which is a nerf, but also no skill cooldown increases, which means immunity to Knockwall, Lua, Judge Kisei, all the units who alter skill cooldowns. This is a massive buff. You literally can't stop her from using her S3 and being immortal for three turns other than by killing her or controlling her, which is rough because she's got a ton of ER. So expect to have your anti-fighting spirit unit in play for at least three to four rounds, if she's properly built. And in addition to this buff, or change I should say, her S3 now not only applies heal block, but defense break. Although her damage has been kind of on the low end, and by low end I mean absolute garbage, defense break allows her to mark a unit for death, letting by proxy her contribute to the rapid death of an enemy. 
To further buff Elvira, the condition requiring Elvira to be immortal to prevent enemies from acquiring fighting spirit, gone. She just has to exist. She no longer has to have her immortality up to block fighting spirit. The blood mana skill, which is her S2 passive skill, will remain in effect whether or not her immortality has been stripped. The only way to start gaining fighting spirit again is to seal her or kill her. This modification ensures a more consistent performance in her primary role of preventing units from getting fighting spirit. Just by existing, she stops fighting spirit. She no longer needs to be immortal. This, in theory, can allow for a lot of different builds. Slow, extremely tanky builds, for example, will function because you don't have to get that S3 off immediately. Next, her S1 only removed a single buff when she hit with her S1. That didn't feel good. It didn't feel like she contributed much to the team. So they've moved that off of her S1, off of her hit and run skill, and transferred it to her exterminate skill, which is the extra attack part of her S2 that can activate, I think, every two turns. So now her S1 skill, hit and run, instead of stripping a debuff, it will inflict provoke, creating better synergy with Immortal because she can't die when she's Immortal and enemies hitting her effectively wasted their turn. When she is not Immortal, it'll be a 75% chance and when she is Immortal, it'll be a 100% chance to provoke. That's huge disruption for a unit that is already hard to kill and hard to control. These adjustments, will more effectively suppress enemies who are reliant on fighting spirit, and she can also apply Beguile more because they're moving her strip skill off of her S1 and putting it onto her S2, which is an AoE attack. So now she has an AoE single debuff strip as a part of that S2 prior to applying Beguile. This will increase her ability to stick Beguile and make her exceedingly nasty on counter set because while she's immortal, she'll be S1 for a provoke into an S2 for an AOE single debuff strip into Beguile. I think counter set on this unit's gonna be kinda nasty. I think she's got some demonic potential and I'm excited to cook with this unit. Oh, and as a final touch, it says they're boosting the damage on this S2 skill. Now, I wouldn't be overly excited for this. 99% sure they don't plan on making her a damage dealing unit per se. They just realize that it feels really bad to see her jump in the air, kick the enemy, knocking the entire team into the air, drawing a giant X over the enemy and have explosions, and then it delivers like 180 damage. So I suspect they will probably be boosting the damage on the skill a little bit, maybe go from a, a 0.5 mod to maybe a 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.75. It's definitely not going up to a 1.0 or anything crazy. I would be shocked because wow that would just break her so what's great about this change is it can allow for several different builds and i love it when units have several potential builds it allows people to cook up some really great text uh, you could go fast support you could go counter tanky on uh, and just be demonic you could say hey you know what i'm not going to bother with er i'm going to put everything into uh effectiveness and just you know avoid picking her into teams that have a lot of strips involved I'm really excited to see all the chefs cook on this unit when she comes out on the 18th and how she'll mix with the balance patch changes as well. I think that very few people will be demanding refunds now as she's just objectively better in every way. I mean, sure, they changed her kit and some people I'm sure are still gonna cry for refunds because she is technically different than originally advertised, but she's better different, right? It's more like they're saying, uh, an airline saying, I'm sorry that the coach seats were oversold, but here's an upgrade to first class. And then stamping your feet saying, I don't want first class. I demanded coach. That's what I paid for. I demand a refund. I mean, it, it just feels kind of lame at this point. You're literally getting an upgraded version of what you were sold. Even considering all of this, Smogate is still acknowledging for those people that this is a change. It's not quite what was originally offered, so they're allowing a recall. They're still doing a full recall. So let me jump into some details about how a recall works. So on the 18th, a recall button is going to appear over top of the unit. It will look much like this one that's over top of Hua Young from her recall last year, or year before last. 
This button will only appear on units who are pulled prior to the 18th. It will not be available on any units pulled after maintenance. When you click on this button, you'll be directed to the recall unit screen, and here you'll be able to recall the unit in its entirety. All of your in-game resources restored to you, up to and including runes, catalysts, molagora, gold spent upgrading, penguins used for leveling, you'll even get a potion of ascension to make a unit a six star again. You will of course not have your sky stones or bookmarks or time spent staring at the screen, rotating the shop, fishing through Garo to try to find resources. That just doesn't happen in these situations. In addition, the first recall that you do, the first unit recall that you do on the Elvira recall, you will be given a five-star selector ticket. This can be used to select any non-limited RGB five-star in the game, up to and including Elvira. This way, if you decide you don't want Elvira, you can pick another unit of your choice and boom, Elvira is gone, new units dropped into your account. If you decide you do want Elvira, but maybe you want to build her differently, maybe you don't want to put Molagora in her S2 because you're not going effect resistance, any of her skill ups differently, you can even select Elvira from the selector and it removes your existing Elvira and gives you a brand new one like you just pulled her. And then you can use all of the resources to build her back exactly the way you wanted her to be built. Now any imprints that you have in Elvira will be restored as an RGB slate. This RGB slate can be used on any non-limited, non-ML 5-star unit. If, instead of the slate, you want your Elvira restored to you, so you can use your selector to get a different unit but keep Elvira, there will be an in-game system where you can send in a ticket and ask Smilegate to remove the slate and restore Elvira. If you have multiple imprints, you'll get multiple slates. You just need to let Smilegate know how many slates you want to keep and how many Elviras you want back. Also, if you used an unknown slate, a normal unknown slate to imprint Elvira, you can use the same system to ask them to take away the RGB only slate and give you back your normal unknown slate that can be used anywhere. You cannot use an unknown slate to imprint your Elvira and ask them to give you an Elvira. You have to have pulled two Elviras to have an Elvira restored to you. They won't just let you use a slate and turn it into a unit through this system, so no cheating the system by, uh, by doing that. If you go through this system to have a slate or an Elvira restored to your account and have the RGB slate removed, it, under normal circumstances, only takes them 24 to 48 hours to, to reply to these kind of changes, a little longer on the weekends. However, it may get extended to three or five days, or maybe a little more, just depending on the load that there is on the customer service team to handle these requests because these are done by hand. So make sure that in that time you don't use the RGB slate that you want exchanged for Elvira. If you use the slate, they won't be able to swap the unit out and they will not unimprint the unit for you to get at the slate. If you use it, it's used and there's no way to have it turned back into Elvira. Also note that for a brief panicked window of time, they will lock your account to make these changes. This only lasts like five minutes tops, right? They do this so that they can log into your account on their side, remove Elvira or remove the slate and restore Elvira, do all the changes without you interrupting them by logging into the game. But uh, during that five minutes, you'll be presented with a screen that says this account has been locked, contact customer support, and you'll be sitting there like I was when I did this with Crimson Arm and thinking, oh God, what did I do to get banned? But don't worry, within a couple of minutes, they'll be done modifying your account, restoring Elvira to you, and then your account will be restored, you'll have full access again, and you'll get an email letting you know that the changes have been made and to check your account to make sure everything is the way you want it. Now, as I said before, the slate is an RGB slate that only works on RGB units who are not limited doesn't work on limiteds, it doesn't work on ML5s, sorry, it sucks, it is what it is. You can't directly use the slate to imprint those units, however, you can indirectly do it. For example, let's say I wanted to make this Judge Key say triple S. I could um, use my selector and get an ice key say, and then I could use the RGB slate and I could imprint that ice key say to a B imprint, 
and then I could slam that Ice Kisei into Judge Kisei, making my Judge Kisei triple S. So this does require you to either use your selector as a uh, imprint mule to take that RGB selector into your ML or into the uh, limited RGB of your choice, or it requires you to wait until you get an RGB unit and mule the slate into an ML or a limited unit that way. I, I know it's an extra hassle, but it is something you could in theory do. I, for one, am very glad to see this direction Smog8 has taken. It practically mirrors everything I asked for in my prior video, down from how they handled her S3, to giving her a defense break, to adding additional ways to control the enemies, to even adding a little damage to her kit. I'm really looking forward to seeing how people cook with her now that the balance patch is going into effect. I hope you guys found this guide informative and useful. If you have any questions or concerns about how the recall works, feel free to join my Discord and hit me up with a DM. I'll be happy to go over it with you. I have been through several recalls. I'll probably even make a video on it where I actually do the recall live so people can see the steps that I take to make it happen. I've got three Elviras, one in storage, so I can totally recall and go through all the steps with you and still keep my Elvira. Don't forget to check out my video on the balance patch changes that are coming up at the same time as the Elvira changes. And remember to come visit me on Twitch, where I am now live streaming practically every day, no promises, but I will be on as often as I can. The rest of you have a great Mola Monday, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great one, everybody.